Your first Ranji Trophy practice when you were drafted into the squad. Do you remember what happened? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was very nervous. I'm not interested in that. You went to the ground for practice without your kit bag. That's not my first day. That, that is was, your. Uh, that was after a few days of uh, me getting into the Ranji Trophy team. You forgot. So whoever has told you this has given you a wrong information. But yeah, yes, that did happen. Uh, <clears throat> I was travelling in a local train. As Mumbai is so populated, uh, the train was filled with people. There was no room for me uh, to stand in that train, leave alone sit seating in the train. I was not able to stand, and I was literally on the doorway of that train, uh, holding my kit back. So, and. we were just approaching the station so you know everybody were rushing out towards the gate so in that process i lost the control of my kit bag and i i dropped my kit bag uh, is that the story you made up on the go or is that the truth why would i make a story like that i was 17 years old at that point i had no uh, your brain doesn't work like that when you're 17 uh, i just i was so scared and nervous at that stage to go and meet the coach and tell him this that this is what <laughs> happened because you know you want to make an impression it's your first entry to you know a uh, uh, a competitive level of cricket and uh, you don't want to mess it up and that is what i was thinking in my mind all the way uh, till i got to the place what was rohit sharma growing up like when he was young when he was 5 years old 6 years old i know he spent a lot of time with your grandparents a little bit with your uncles as well so what was it being rohit sharma at that age ah uh, it's just uh, like any other kid in 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 mumbai uh, growing up uh, um, playing cricket uh, in your backyard with your friends school friends uh, and you know being naughty uh, you know breaking window glasses of your neighbors while playing cricket uh, in your society so those kind of things is what uh, i grew up doing uh, also uh, obviously in uh, you know i i give a lot of uh, thought uh, to my education as well at that point i although i was an average student not good not bad uh, but yeah at that point you, you you don't think of too far ahead you just want to make uh, you know yourself uh like you you want to get good marks good grades in your in your school uh and keep pushing forward uh and at the same time you know whenever i used to have time i used to play cricket with my uh, school friends with my building friends uh in the backyard and yeah uh, we did we did a lot of naughty things while doing while playing uh, a lot of our neighbors were not happy with it in fact they got cops to come and stop the cricket because we were bra breaking window glasses uh, which is not pleasing for anyone uh, but yeah it's something that you enjoy when you're kids you, you know you you're playing you're being yourself more than anything else uh, so that's what uh, i did one of your biggest admirers uh, at the start was dilip winsap yeah and the first net session you had when he watched you apparently you got out 20 times you were yes. nicking out swingers for a joke yeah. and then everybody rohit sharma can't play swing bowling this that how do you deal with these kind of conversations that come across like you? i told you uh, that experience was not the greatest and i don't want to remember it because uh, you know i i used to look up to all these guys in mumbai dressing room wasim jafar uh, likes of amol muzumdar sairaj bautule vinod kamli ajit agarkar was there for a brief period uh, he was busy playing international cricket uh, Sachin Tendulkar wasn't around he was playing international cricket at that point so all these guys you know as kid growing up uh, you're looking up to all these guys and entering that dressing room was not the easiest one uh, you know you 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 saw all these guys sitting around you uh, that made me very nervous and at the same time when i have to go and face them bat in the nets guys like avishkar salvi ajit agarkar swapnil hazare uh, you know and many more uh i don't want to remember it yes absolutely right that I, i i i i mean i must have played like 30 35 balls probably were you trying to impress in that when you were no, batting no i just I, i was just trying to bat i i didn't wanted to impress anyone because i was i was a rookie at that point and uh i just wanted to get the feeling of being with 
these stalwarts at that point. I was not thinking of impressing anyone because. So now, what would a Rohit Sharma tell a young boy where selectors are watching, big players are watching? You just know? be yourself. I think that's very important. You can't, you can't think of okay, this guy is watching me. I need to, I need to bat for him rather than batting for yourself. You're batting for him, which is not ideal. Uh, when you're a, when you're a youngster, get trying to get into the team, just be yourself, and keep it as simple as possible. And that is what I was trying to do, which I failed. Uh, doing miserably. <laughs> I, I remember all these guys standing behind the nets and watching me because, like, a lot of the guys were told me, like, I asked them, why are these guys standing behind me and watching my batting, not yours or not anyone else's? So they told me, you're, you are the guy whose whose name is doing the rounds, and you know, like, you're an upcoming player. <clears throat> so they want to see what what ability you have. Yeah, that made me a little happy, but uh, and then I you play this net session didn't go that well. Then were you dejected? Not or? able to move my feet. <laughs> Just nothing was, you know, going hand in hand. You, when you're batting, you you like that flow happening, and you want that flow to uh, kick in. That that didn't happen. Uh, I was very nervous. But I would like to tell you, Vinod Kamli was the one who came to me <clears throat> and made me really comfortable. He told me, "Don't worry about all those guys standing behind and all of us watching you. Just bat." We know, we've heard about you that, you know, you're a good player, you play these kind of shots. Just just think of those good things. So, that was a little motivating. Exactly. Now, now that you speak <coughs> about Vinod Kambli, he was a senior at that stage for Bombay. Today, you're a senior for Team India. And I know this one thing about you, which is a very... For me, it's a fascinating trait to have. You reach out to all the young boys and make them feel so comfortable. <sighs> You, you know, speak to them about the game. More importantly, you'll be one of the guys who'll take them out for meals and all that. Is that a conscious effort or is that something that you have in you? Uh, I mean, when, when you're born, you don't have anything in you. Uh, you. You try and build yourself as a human being. And that is something that I've done. Uh, because I've gone through all those things and it made me so much uncomfortable when people don't come and talk to you and, you know, uh, when things are not going well. You need people to come and give you that motivation, which probably I would say I didn't have a lot. Uh, so I, 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 I kind of feel where these guys are coming from and what situation these guys are in right now, uh, just to make them comfortable. I'm no stalwart to you know just put my hand around them. It's just that you know when I know the feel of uh, your teammate, your companion coming and showing that motivation and showing that support factor, which is very, very crucial. Some Someone may be having a bad day. All he needs at that point is just a pat uh, on his back or, you know, an arm around his neck saying that, okay, don't worry about what has happened. What has happened is gone. You can't change it. Focus on what you can achieve tomorrow. And that is what I try and do. You're somebody who's constantly met with adversity. Your biggest moment for me, I thought, there's always, uh, you know, there's a certain change. And that happened in the 2011 World Cup. Was yeah, that yeah. your biggest body blow, so, so to say? Yeah, it was the worst time. I, uh, I still remember because... Uh, <clears throat> I remember, I, sorry, I'll stop you there. I remember this headline that I vividly remember. Rohit Sharma. No Rohit Sharma for World Cup 2011. It was, yeah. part, it was a headline that I saw and I'll never forget it. So, what happened during that time? No, I was I was quite desperate to get into the team and do do something for the team at that point. And I I know you know you you will be playing in front of your home crowd, and I know the sort of team we had. We had the best chance of winning the World Cup. So I wanted to be part of that World Cup. Uh, and and if I get an opportunity, try and make a difference. That is what I was thinking. And I I mean somewhere down the line I blame myself. I don't want to blame anyone for it. Uh, it's just that uh, I I. Didn't had a great run, maybe slightly before that. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think that setback was needed. That kind of setback was needed to improve myself, uh, to to understand my game better. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that saying this in a wrong way. Uh, everyone wants to be part of the World Cup, but in a way, it did good for me. Uh, you know, I, I came back as a different person altogether. Uh, I started learning more about my batting, uh, my uh, under trying to understand about my uh, career, what I need to do from here on now. Uh, those kind of things actually helped me a lot. And 
yeah, I, I sort of completely changed everything. Uh, you know, I changed my uh, mindset firstly, and then a little bit of technical aspect of my game as well. When you say mindset, like you know, this the whole point of this interview is to help youngsters, and one of the things that you do is inspire young people. Yeah. What is that change that brought mentally? I know for a fact how you train. I, I would, I would, I wouldn't want to say it myself. I know the way you train started, you know, was completely different. What are the mindset changes, lifestyle changes that you brought in after the 2011 World Cup? Yeah, I mean, the heaps actually. Uh, first things first and the foremost was, you know, try and try and understand what you're doing. You know, you're playing for your country. Out of 1.2 billion at that point, you are one of them who are knocking the door or playing on and off. You're there, there and about. Uh, so that actually was something that I wanted to take it really hard and say that, okay, this is an opportunity for me and I have to make the most of it. Before the World Cup, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to say that I was not I was not giving that importance uh, playing for India. It's uh, it's not the story. It's not the case. Uh, it's just that I, I I didn't understand the role because the batting position of mine kept changing. I was not able to adapt, and I thought, okay, if I'm batting at seven, I need to bat in the same way how I bat at number three or four. So that kind of you know uh, pushed me a little back because you know you you need to change your game based on where you bat and. I only say that because when you're batting with 10 overs left, you need to bat in a different different fashion than the way you bat at number three. Now, cricket has changed completely. Now, you know, we, we see uh, batsmen trying to put pressure on, on the bowlers every time they walk uh, out to bat. Bowlers coming out and hitting those bouncers, yorkers every time, which was not the case a decade ago. You know, they used to come and still try to swing the ball and hit that length. It still happens, but you know, now you see guys are more aggressive. They want to take wickets. They, uh, guys want to score runs quickly. Uh, so that is something that I didn't understand before the World Cup. And that is something that I told myself that, you know, when I come back into this Indian team again, doesn't matter if anyone gives me that role clarity. I should know what is expected out of me wherever I bat. And that's something that I kept telling myself. And that was the biggest change that I brought every time when there's a game happening, I'm batting at 6 or 7 or 5 or whatever it is. I'm watching the game and I'm visualizing that this is the position that I may bat and I need to do this for the team. It might be only 10 overs left at that point. What are, what are my short options? What are uh, Which are the guys who are going to bowl uh, to me at that stage? So those are the things, you know, like trying to stay ahead of the game and, and, and those kind of things. You know, one of the things I hate when people say about you is lazy elegance and they 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 kind of un feel that you're lazy outside as well. <laughs> it's got no relevance at all. <laughs> Can you please explain what... When you're playing a sport, you cannot be lazy. As simple as that. You Correct. know, maybe it may sound or it may look on television. But if you're lazy, you cannot achieve what you want to achieve on the field. You have to be at it. When you're playing, you have to be at it. Like I said just now, you have to be ahead of the game. And you cannot be ahead of the game, ahead of your opposition, if you're lazy. I mean, I, I'm not someone who's just sitting on, uh, you know, what I've achieved before and say that, okay, I got 100 in the last game, I was just, I'm not willing to put an effort. It, it doesn't work like that in, in any sport. Every day is a fresh day, every day is a new day, new challenges, new opposition. So, you just have to forget what has happened. And the only way you can do that is by staying ahead of the game, thinking uh, in your mind that, okay, this is what you want to achieve and you... Uh, I'm not saying, I mean, a, a lazy person be, cannot be that active in his mind. So, even behind all those brilliant looking shots, which is lazy for a lot of this effort going in. There is an effort. Day in the you minute. have to get on to the ball. When you when I pull the shot, when I play that pull shot, there is an effort. Otherwise, if, if you're so lazy... So, when it comes at 155 and you're lazy, you can't hit that pull shot, can you? You can't, yeah. When guys, you know, there are guys who are bowling 145 plus and all that, you can't be lazy. You'll get hit on your head if you're lazy. <laughs> so, I, I don't think... Uh, People people understand that, but yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. They've been talking about this 
since I started playing for India. Oh, he's got lazy elegance and I, I don't understand this term, lazy elegance. <laughs> There's Honestly, nothing called lazy elegance. Seriously. You know, I mean, a lot of batsmen will crave it and want it, but the person who has it is saying there's nothing like that. There is nothing as such. I have also heard that he's got a lot of time. No, boss. <laughs> I don't have any time. I know when I'm playing the bowler, you have to be at it, you have to get ready. There is no such thing as an extra time or he has got more time. Every bas batsman is challenged when he is facing the bowler. So, you, you just have to be on top of your game, top of your mindset to come out on top for that particular delivery. So, and when how, somebody bowls at 150, whether it is Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma or random XYZ, it comes at the same there time. There is no time. <laughs> that, I, that I wanted to… There is no… You have the same time yeah. like everybody else. You I mean, guys time. are quick enough to rattle you. You know, there is no such thing. I, um, yes, technically you can say he plays the ball late. That is, that is something you can say. A lot of the guys, there are different kind of batsmanship that you see, uh, you know, guys, some guys like to press forward, meet the ball here, some guys like to play it late here. So, those kind of things. There is no such thing as he's got less time, more time. I don't think so. You know, now that we talk about time, different times, there's more time while batting, less time while doing something else, but there were good times. And that happened in 2015 when you got married. But let's not get into the marriage. Let's get little before that, when a lot of your friends saw you and Ritika together and felt that, oh, you know, you all will make a yeah. great pair. Yeah. And then you quietly said, no, 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 we are just friends, we are just friends. And then, <coughs> in between, you all were dating for a bit and refused to tell all your close friends. And one of the good things about Rohit, I have to admit here, the friends that he had 20 years ago are still the same friends that he has today. But you kept it in a sneaky way, you kept it very quiet. May we all know why, please. So, first one, I'll, I'll think it was that uh, we got married in 2015, but we Don't didn't get that wrong. She'll kill you. <laughs> Next. No, no um, before that you said that we were dating and a lot of people didn't know about it. a lot her. of people. Your close friends who actually felt that you all make and a they, fabulous yeah, yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But honestly, you, my wife is standing right here. You can ask her. We actually never felt it like that. We were, yes, you know, we were working together. She is still my manager and she was my manager back then as well. So, we had a very kind of straightforward relationship, working relationship. And then after the work, we were really, really close friends. You know, like, I, I don't care about what people think, but we know, uh, yes, my close friends told me that, okay, we see something in this relationship. It's, it's more than... Uh, what Just you guys think? A manager-player relationship. Yeah, but a I lot said more no. Yeah, it, it might be when you when you look at us, it might sound like okay, yes, we have more than what we are right now. But it was never like that. It was just friendship and you know caring about each other and working relationship, very professional working relationship. Uh, but yeah, it turned out later that so all my friends, friends were right. Were right. <laughs> <laughs> and was there uh, a quiet yeah, yeah, period yeah, yeah. of five to six months when you all were together, but some of the close ones didn't know at that point. Was it there? No, I mean, I, I just thought, how will I tell them? <laughs> because they have told me a year back that, or maybe much, much before that, you know, we, we you guys are a very cute couple and all that. We see more than, we will see. I know you are still by far, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, so when we started dating uh, officially, I, we were thinking, how will I tell my friends and just, they're going to so pull my... Shy. Yeah, I mean, I, they're going to kill that is like, Shy and Rohit, it just doesn't not go Not shy, together. I mean, I, I didn't <laughs> tell them. I said, no, yeah, these guys will, these guys will not let me live. Tell uh, me this, I find this a fabulous trait about you. Fascinating, actually, is the right word. The same friends that you all had 20 years ago, you know, I can name a few, but, you know, Murti yeah. Zayan, all of those guys, yeah, but yeah. today, they're still your close friends, you look out for them. How have you managed that as a person? You travel so much, you know, you're such a family yeah, man. Genuine, genuine people. Uh, you know, we started, we, this friendship started way back in 90s, you know. Uh, we, we used to play together. Uh, these are my very, very close and childhood friends, you know, uh, when we were nothing. We were just enjoying you're each other. bikers. Not even bikers. So you've still managed to hang on to them as your yeah, dear yeah, ones. They are, they, they are the ones who I love. Uh, hanging out with because they they keep it real as simple as that you know if I play a bad shot they like to watch my game of course if I play a bad shot they'll say what the what the hell did you do 
what shot was that so you know and i need that in my life you know i need someone to just be honest and tell me you're wrong you're right you're wrong you're doing this this is not right so i need that i mean of course you cannot be right all the time and these friends these close friends help me to live my life in the way that i want and i do the same to them as well you know often they call me for advice about their uh, personal matters and all things like that so you know we have that kind of relationship the before Ro- the ritika rohit sharma was somebody who used to cry looking at surya when she movies <laughs> yo <laughs> man <laughs> that is before ritika now the current oh, after I, ritika I don't rohit who sharma told this. is no, the guy who watches game of thrones breaking bad how i met your mother now yeah, tell yeah, me yeah, about this <laughs> that has changed <laughs> tell me a little bit about this please i want to i know. come from borivli now after marriage i've become a townie <laughs> kolaba <laughs> But no, I mean, I, it's you need to upgrade yourself, man, all the time. So I, I think I've done that. <laughs> You've just upgraded. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Um, uh, Do you, you miss you, that you, uh, old uh, Surya when she cried? No, Rohit no, Chalma? not at all. I mean, when I am in England, I try and live the culture people live here. When I am in Bombay, Bombay has different parts, town, uh, my childhood place, Borivli. So. When I go to Borivli, I try to be a Borivli lad. When I am in town, Borivli lad. Yeah, lad. <laughs> Perfect in English. I like it. No, absolutely. In England, they call lad. When we are in Ritika's house, it's, it's a different ball game there. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I enjoy that. I want to. I cannot be just one-dimensional. I, I like to be. No, I think that's also your strength. You know, if you yeah. do go back to your roots, see all your old friends, your that person, and then you need. Nowadays, come to you have to play shots everywhere. Correct. You can't just play one shot. <laughs> so you need to have four or five shots. <laughs> you are a proper 360 degree player. <laughs> so you played the one test match in Southampton up till now in England. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you've seen a lot I've, of test matches before that. Before the World Test Championship final, you played one more, but in Southampton. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Southampton. So now, yes. my question to you is: You've seen a lot of matches being played in England. Yeah. What do you think it it is and it means to play in England? Please? No, the most challenging place to play cricket, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, we have seen that over the years. It's not it's not just me talking about it. Uh, the entire cricketing fraternity talks about it. It's 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 the fact, and I've experienced myself on many occasions. Whether it was uh, I played only two Test matches here, uh, but I've played a lot of white ball cricket, and it is uh, challenging. Uh, So yeah I mean it's it's always it's it, it as as a cricketer you always feel good about yourself when you do good in those kind of situation uh, you know in those kind of places uh, where it's always challenging but I'm not looking at that I know what I, what is expected out of me and what I need to do for the team that is all I'm trying to think and trying to be in good frame of mind the last 5 or 6 years that i've played cricket i have tried to keep things as simple as possible not overthink or not underthink you just have to have that right balance between that so i think uh i think more on those lines where i i i can keep a balance nice balance between how much i think and how much i don't think uh it's it's not like i never not think you can sometime overthink as well so i try and keep that balance and at the moment it's just about having fun enjoying cricket uh, with my teammates that's that's all i try and think if you take the openers for england there's burns and sibley if i may use the word maybe it's a little strong they're not the most beautiful looking players if i may use they're not the most good looking players and on the other hand there is rohit sharma arguably the most good looking batsman ever to have played the game then there is a mayank or a prithvi shaw who are the other openers along with abhimanyu ishwaran now if you take most of them they're very flamboyant so england has what you call tough openers or grind and then india has a lot more f- stroke makers so to say where does this weigh up what do you think about i think firstly it, it doesn't really matter how people look when they bat uh, it's just what they produce at the end of the day what results they give it to the team uh uh both of their openers i saw a bit of them in england uh, in india uh, i don't really watch too much cricket on television but obviously these guys played against us uh, recently in india and yeah the 
the conditions were challenging but i got to see a little bit of their openness and i think uh, it doesn't really matter how they look when they defend the ball or how they look when they drive the ball it's it's important the end result I, that's what i'm trying to say uh, for us as well uh, you know it's cricket is not about how good you look i think uh, if you want to look good you should try movies and see if you can have a career there <laughs> but i think uh, for us it's about result and if if they're giving results to their team it doesn't matter how they play where do you stand with comparisons like for example gavaskar said you have a bit of uh, vivian richards and a bit of uh, virender sehwag about you where, where do you stand with comparisons i hate it you don't like it hate it everyone's different you can't compare comparison is only comparison is a thief of joy it's just sit there and you know two people trying to compare people so that it's fun for the spectators to watch it oh wow they're comparing so this is what he does this is what he doesn't do it's good for the audience not uh, if you ask any sportsman they'll they'll not be happy about it because everyone has their own strength weakness everyone's different so i mean how can you compare it's it's only for t- television you made your test debut you had a fabulous start but then after that you know you were in and out what was rohit sharma going through at that stage so till about 2019 so yeah, those 4 yeah. 5 years you were in and out what were you going through as a person i know you know i have a follow up question but let's yeah, yeah. for this question what was rohit sharma going through at that stage no it just was tough uh, whenever you, you you have that sort of situation around you it's not easy you you're not you're not comfortable uh, but what i mean what can you do as as a cricketer at that in point is in your case you are acing white ball cricket you have become a very dominant force in white ball cricket <clears throat> but still finding it hard to you know figure out test cricket so yeah, how was it how was that that was i'm tell, i'm telling you it was it was not the easiest at uh, when 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 you're going through that phase but having played cricket for a while uh, there's there's so much you can do at that stage all you can do is just is work on your game and keep enjoying your game that was that is something that i was trying to do not think oh i'm not i was not getting frustrated that i'm not finding a place in the in the squad or anything like that because you know i've i've the first 5 or 6 years i was very hard on myself like you said the world cup after world cup this has changed in my uh, thought process that i'm not going to think too much about what has happened or what is happening with me right now i just want to focus on my game and try and improve my game because you you can only control the controllables and the controllables was to see how much far i can take my front foot if i can leave the ball outside off stump those were the things that i could control i i was i was never be able to control the selectors the selection the pitches you definitely talking about the fact that you when you take on situations all you're trying to do is control whatever with, is within yeah, exactly. you you know the way you prepare the way you you know come the same things over the routines so i that is something that i told myself if if i'm not getting a place in the team if i'm getting dropped or you know this is after the world cup like i told myself that i'm not going to get frustrated with those kind of things because there's nothing you can do uh, so that is the change that i brought in myself that you know if something happens something bad happens you have a bad day on the field it's fine just go relax in your room and try and you know just unwind can i say post 2019 we came back into the test team you were okay to fail it's okay bro sharma failed at test match yeah 100% match. i mean as a sportsman you will have bad days you will have off days so you have to accept that you're going to fail and you should be okay with it and i was very much okay with it because i know when you when i have my day i i want to make the most of it most when you're having a bad day it can be it can become your worst day like when you get out on zero there's a possibility when you go to field you might drop a catch and that make that may lose a game for the team so it's it's better that what has happened you just let it go and just try and enjoy and focus on what you have in hand you see it's interesting isn't it when you made your debut i was there at your side like basically i was standing and you walked in and we batted together and i first. remember that incident <laughs> i asked you what is happening dinesh uh, who's bo- uh, andrew, andrew hall, hall was bowling, was bowling. Yes. and he had a bit of an awkward action I asked you what what sort of pace he is bowling at because I need to be ready. You said I don't know it's normal coming in sir. The first ball I faced hit my pad really hard. I got a bruising. I was bruised under my pads because I I had no idea about the protection and all that. I just wore blue pads and came to bat. 
so dinesh dinesh could have helped me saying you know he's bowling a little bit of it's reverse swinging and he's bowling a little quick so get ready <laughs> but everybody said you dinesh are extra... was my senior partner at that point but, but everybody told me rohit sharma has extra time that is what i meant by extra time nobody in the world has extra time time is time so make the most of it of it tell us a little bit about rohit sharma the father to samira is he a, yeah, does he melt i heard you put her in schooling you have to wake up very early yeah. to sit with her how does that <laughs> yeah her schooling has started i mean i love being a father i think it's the best thing that has happened uh, fatherhood you know people may May, people make you feel that oh you become a father old man you're old but it's not i'm happy being old if people think that way it's the best thing this one sorry whether other people think you're old or not you are old 14 years you're playing yeah, you're years, old but i made <laughs> let's make that very clear you young at heart i'll give you that <laughs> <laughs> but old good one but yeah no it's it's the best thing uh, i love it uh, you know uh, right now the the times we are going through you know all these kids they have to do online thing and which is not ideal for these kids to sit in front of an ipad or a laptop and go through all those but yeah what whatever we have in hand we have to take that situation but yeah waking up early is difficult i have woken up twice thrice maybe uh my wife does the classes with her uh it's only because uh, i was not so good at academics so my wife takes over that but i do a lot of homework with her I'm later sure you'll be a fabulous father you're underplaying like everything else about you you're underplaying this no i, I mean, spoken I, to ritika and she's told me that you're fabulous father in what you said is not judged only by waking Education, up early and no, exactly. sitting for you the class you do other facets which you are not speaking about which is understandable which i love yeah i mean are you a is she a proper daddy's girl anything she asks I anything mean, she actually she loves mama the most okay um, i will i'll say i am the second second it's not a bad place to be yeah i'm happy with it brand rohit sharma that's something i've closely followed a i know rohit sharma as a person but as a as a brand what he's trying to do is leaving the world a better place i know you do rhino conservation you speak about it the ocean a little bit what does this mean to you it means a lot uh, let me put it very in a very simple manner it's just I think about our future generation what will they have they'll have nothing if if the world continues the way it is right now uh it's going to be sad it's going to be sad it's going to be tough uh, for for all these young kids who are growing up now uh they won't have fresh air to breathe they won't have ocean to do go and uh, to go and watch uh all the marine life you know that 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 is something you think about every day because we are doing this right now and and we enjoy it so much and i want this to continue as simple as that i am not trying to complicate things here and say oh no because of this because of that it just you logically if you think of it you know it makes you sad that they they what we are doing right now and ma- it makes you so happy and i know i'm pretty 100% sure if my child tomorrow goes into the ocean and sees all this marine life she will be thrilled you know uh, you you give her a chocolate or ice cream or something and on the other hand you keep these things she will pick these things because that is something that she loves and that's inborn also we have we are trying to inculcate uh, these kind of things uh, when she grows up like we have to take care of our oceans we have to take care of our uh, uh, you know animals and things like that it, it's very important that you teach your kid and when they grow up they they can educate few other f- friends of theirs and that's how it spreads and what we try and do what i try and do is just spread awareness and try and tell people if you can help it'll be great as a batter there is white ball cricket these days and red ball cricket do you think the younger generation will oscillate a lot towards white ball cricket that's one question b if they also want to play red ball cricket white ball cricket and red ball cricket what are the small changes that they would need to make because you're so good at it what are the changes that you would say that they need to look into i think firstly uh, it all depends on individual how they have been brought up what sort of education they are having about playing cricket if if the coaches and where they are growing up is is the place where it's only ipl or 100 or big bash those kind of things are talked about then the, then those guys will not understand the importance of red ball cricket 
and it's important for guys like who are playing currently to you know talk about a red ball cricket a lot because of course it, it's the challenging format and you try and challenge yourself as a sportsman every day and that is the best format where you will be challenged every day uh so it's also responsibility of ours to to try and you know tell all these younger guys how important it is red ball cricket is yeah and also the place where they grow up and where they go to academies and all that so in your journey has red ball cricket been tougher easily and it will be no matter even if um, for example even if i get how much ever runs or whatever it is it will still be the most why do you say that no because 5 days you have to be at your best i'm a batsman i can say i i have to bat but i do another thing in the Slipping. slips yeah i have to catch i have to catch and i have to be alert i have to you know help my bowlers get those wickets and if you don't get 20 wickets you're not winning games so it's all about being physically fit and mentally yeah, fit yeah well. you both i mean that is why i say 5 days is the toughest you know you have to be at your best waking up every day with your sore body is not easy uh, you know i feel for the bowlers poor guys i mean they just have to bowl after bowl overs after overs and then wake up again and then come do it again it's it's tough it's it's not easy <clears throat> do you think a good white ball cricketer can also be a good red ball cricketer why not 100% how i see at the moment is mentally what do you talk to yourself mentally what do you tell yourself is what will happen if you tell yourself no i don't i'm i'm only good enough for white ball i inside you know maybe you will not talk to anyone but inside you know what you are to- w- w- what you are thinking absolutely and that exactly will happen if you are saying to yourself within the room that you are confined that okay uh, maybe i'm not good enough for red ball or i don't enjoy red ball no there's not fu- it's not fun i don't want to wake up every day i don't want to do this i don't want to go through all those 90 overs through the day then you won't be able to do it then you won't so which is why we keep talking about mindset we keep talking about mind mind is the most powerful thing which is this is the reason because what you tell your mind is what will come out you tell your mind that this is what i want to achieve maybe you will not achieve but at, at least you will go in that direction to achieve it see there's no guarantee whether you will have success if you think like that but at least you are trying for it and that is what matters you try you succeed you succeed you fail you fail i've yeah. learned this through a little bit of captaincy that i have done for mumbai indians because i know that i've told i've i've been in so many different situation with mumbai i had when when i had bowlers like malinga bumra mitchell johnson and those kind of guys your mind is telling something and the, your stat is telling something i always go with my mind and that has helped me which is where i got a signal that please trust your mind whatever you want to do there will be a voice which will keep coming out and it'll tell you i think you should do this should. so it's it's just that you have to listen to your inner voice and trust that okay this is what it is you will fail also dinesh i'm not saying that you know always when you do that you will get result and you will be successful and this and that no at least then when you go back even if you fail you'll you'll think that okay you know i trusted my instinct i did what was told to me by my inner voice then you fail you fail it's fine i had a great experience of captaining mumbai which i think has helped me immensely not just on the field but off the field to conduct myself and all of those things this captaincy has helped me really for all young captains leaders out there do all your preparation which you do i know and you're very good at it background homework stats you know who's a good match up everything but in the ground every time there's a question listen it's, to your instincts that's only for you to have a second option like plan b for you the first option is always to because you 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 you're playing the game you know what it is if a batsman doesn't know how to play cover drive feed him let him play cover drive that is common sense that is basic if a guy doesn't know how to cut the ball try and make him cut the ball those are simple basic thing and then if those plans doesn't work you go to your stats and think okay this is what we saw previous night and this is where he struggles let's try that today and let's see 
My plan A has not worked. Let's see, this is my plan B if it works. Rohit Sharma takes a flight back on September 15th to Dubai. Yeah. What would make Rohit Sharma happy for his on-field performances? What would you have liked to achieve in the next one month? Uh, I, just, I just want us to win. I am not worried about how much runs I am going to get or how many hundreds I need to score. I just want to win here. It's, it's a great chance for us to win here. We, because we have the team, we have the squad, we have the, we have the players, we have the bowlers to take 20 wickets. So we just want to challenge their batters here as well. You know, uh, I know they have a bit of inexperience in, in, the, in the middle order with some of the new guys coming in, but they're all good. Uh, don't get me wrong there, but yeah, this is our best chance to win in England. Uh, yeah, so that's, for me, it's all about winning championship now, Dinesh. Not about how much I get, how much I, that's, I want to win championships, man.